Hey everyone, it's Will Heeman, and today I want to talk to you guys about how to set up a trap for those LDD moths. Because if you are in an area like we are here in southwestern Ontario, you had a big problem with the actual caterpillars for those LDDs that were prevalent all through the springtime. And now, July through September, you're starting to see that those moths, which are all around us at this time, are starting to breed and looking for those, you're finding those males, looking for those females. And using a trap like this with a pheromone is an easy and effective way to capture those males so that they can't find and breed with those females to help reduce the population of eggs that you'll have for next season. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna show you what's inside the kit and the items that you'll need to help you get your moth trap set up. So you're gonna need a couple things to do this job. You're going to need, for sure, you're gonna need your moth trap, which we have here, as well as a pair of gloves, and that will become very important in a minute. I have a couple optional items here as well, which is just an extra, in this case, a zip cord, but you can also just use any kind of string. It's gonna help you to suspend the moth trap in the tree if you need. And then I also have just the end of a pen, that's where, which is gonna help us to poke out the holes that are gonna guide our wires in there. So let's get into opening up the trap. All right, so I have our trap and we're going to empty out the container, uh, the contents here. And as you can see, we've got our instructions and we've got a couple, we've got our lid for our trap. We've got a couple of our sticky cards as well as our pheromone or our lure, which is going to be this little rope thing here. And then we've got our zip ties, which are gonna to help to close out the trap and then hang the trap. And then we also have the trap itself, which is this guy right here. All right, so I have all the components of our trap that are set aside. On the back of this, you're gonna see some basic information about this trap, which is gonna tell you that the lure itself is gonna be effective to give you control about two to 3,000 square feet. So if you have any moths that are in your area about that big, then they're gonna be drawn to this trap. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna focus on the roof and the actual trap itself. So the first thing we wanna do with this trap is basically pop it open. So it's gonna be like a milk carton kind of consistency there and we're just gonna simply pop it and that's gonna help to lock in the bottom parts there and then we're gonna set this guy aside so now that we have our main part set up we're gonna grab the roof of this and we're gonna just fold these tabs so you have these middle parts and they're all kind of perforated so the first thing we're gonna do is go to the middle we're gonna fold these guys outward like that so when you're done you would almost see like the white side or the underside of this we're gonna do the one and then we're gonna do the other so this is going to be kind of pointing up to the sky just like that the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at that gypsy moth go away we're not ready for you just yet so the next part that we're going to do once we folded these tabs up is we're going to take these middle tabs that are going to be along this end here and we're going to push them down so what I want to do is I'm going to kind of fold them just a little bit like this just to get them worked in because ultimately when we're doing it we want to have these uh, these points facing down to give ourselves a little bit of an opening for the moths to fly in underneath so once we have that done what we're going to do is we're going to grab our little container again and we're going to now that we have that part opened up we're going to square this up and then we're going to slide it just over top just like so we're going to slide it about halfway down and if you can see on here there's going to be these little perforated parts right there and that tab right here is going to slide under this and there's one on each side here so we're going to slide it just a little bit below that one so that we can easily take and guide those parts in so now that I've done that I'm going to make sure that each one of them is opened up just a little bit and I'm going to slide each tab into it. And my last one here. Last one's always going to be your little tricky one because you got a little less wiggle room. And now we have our house. We're going to fold these guys down in a second, but what we're going to do now is we're going to set this one aside and we're going to go to the rest of our components. Now, at this point, this is where we're actually gonna grab our pheromone. I'm gonna do that part again. Okay, so now we have built our trap. We have it here. It kind of looks like a little bit of a house there. And now we're gonna start working with the actual pheromone, which has already brought another moth to it right here. And we're also gonna grab our sticky card. 
think of this like your milkshake. It's gonna bring all the boys to the yard because all these pheromones, this pheromone is a female lure and it's basically gonna bring all of the males to it. And we're gonna drop that inside once we open it up. And then this sticky card here, there's two of them in there. You're only gonna need one. The second is to replace it once it's completely covered with all of your male moss. All right, go away. Once we have, once we're ready at this point, this is where our gloves come in because this puppy is potent. It's not gonna smell or anything like that, but it will stay on your skin and you will be walking around like the coolest kid in town to these gypsy moss. And I don't wanna have that happen and I don't think that you do either. So that's where we're gonna grab our gloves so that we don't get it on our skin. And I can't tell you this strongly enough, if you don't wanna have a whole bunch of gypsy moss thinking that you smell super lovely, then make sure you have your gloves and don't actually touch the lure. Now I have my gloves on, so I'm gonna open up the lure. In this instruction card here, this is just explaining that this is the lure, but this is not actually the lure. So we're gonna pull this guy out. Now you can just grab it out. It, in this case, with these traps, it just looks like a string. And all we have to do is just drop it in the box. Just like that, it'll just sit right at the bottom and all the moss will be smelling that and then they'll come inside these little holes that are all around the side and they'll fly in there. And then with our sticky card that we have here, we're gonna grab one of the sticky cards. We're gonna use the other one after, as I said. It's a good idea to just leave the gloves on here in case you do get any of the sticky cards on you, but there's two protective sides to this that will help you to not get so sticky. I'm gonna pull those guys off and then I'm gonna drop this in diagonally so you can see that it is going to be just as wide as your actual trap so what you want to do is turn it on a sideways angle just like so and just drop that in like that and you're good to go now if you still need after you get this one you can still purchase these guys the safer sticky traps that we have here at he missouri that you can find around they're going to be the same size so if you need more than just these two that come with the trap that's an easy thing to do so at this point, I put most of the other components aside. I'm gonna take my extra sticky card and I'm gonna save that one for later. We're gonna need that in a second. At this point, I can take off my gloves and you might be wondering this pen cap. Some of the models of these traps, the actual holes that are on these guides here are not poked out. So if you have a model like that, you can simply just poke them and it makes it really easy to guide your zip ties. At this point, we have our lure inside of there we have our sticky card inside of there and our roof is attached so now what we need to do is we're going to fold these guys in and just like i said before it's a milk carton like thing you're going to have these two guidelines right here that are pre-perforated so we're going to fold on those perforations and it's going to help us to basically fold that guy in just like so so now that we have our trap here, you can see that we've got our holes and we've, we're gonna pull them together. Now there's three sets of holes that are on there. The outer ones are gonna be the ones that will line up to help to zip it shut. And then the middle one here is gonna be what we're gonna use to hang the actual trap. So when we pull it together, we're gonna line this up just like so. And then we're gonna fold the longer edge over top of the other one so that they line up the hole so that you can see through and through. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of our zip ties or twist ties here. I like to put a slight indent in the actual tie so that it's gonna be a little easier to pull it through like this. And what you can do is you can pull it nice and tight and then just twist it around, get it firmly in place. And we've done our one. And then you're gonna do the exact same for the other side as well. So I'm gonna put a little bend in it, line them up, put it through. And twist them around and good to go. So we are almost done. Now our last one that we have here, this is gonna be our longer twist tie. If you are like us with our beautiful tree back here, that twist tie is probably not gonna be long enough. But if it's not long enough, you can grab yourself any string or any other uh, zip tie or twisty like this. You have anything that's gonna help you to secure it onto the tree or the post or wherever you're gonna put it. In this case, I'm going to take, look at that, go away. We're gonna take this guy here and you can either go through and through like this and then tie it around at the top or you can fold it around and tie it extra good here to give yourself a little bit of length, whatever floats your boat. The last thing that we're going to do, and this is really like an optional thing, it just depends on how secure you want your actual roof on your trap to be. But on this case, what we've talked about before, where we pre 
bent those perforations on there, what we want to do is take each of these tips and we're going to bend them down. And when we bend them down, you can see that these side perforations are there and they will help to flare that out so that when you're doing it, you'll create a little bit of a hole that will help to guide them in so that as the moths are flying to your trap, they'll see there's not one but two holes up there that they can fly into. And once they get in, it's really hard for them to get out. Most of the time they're going to fly immediately and then stick onto that sticky card so there's no chance of them getting out. And then once you actually have that secured, you want to go out every couple days, check on it, see if the sticky card is good and uh, stuck or if you still got a little bit more life on it. I already have this one here, but if we wanted to, we could hang another one in another location. Usually having one in this area is going to be good, but if you have a large property or if you have a big problem and you want to hang a second one, it's okay to put them pretty far away because as you've seen, seen through this video and as you can see now already, these lures are very, very effective. So you don't need to put them all side by side. They will find them. They will fly to them. And there you have it. So once you have your lure inside and you have your sticky card inside and you've attached the roof on the top there, you can go ahead and hang these. My last suggestion to you is if it's at all possible, these things can be outside for a long time through the summer. As I said, the breeding cycle is going to be July and August heavy and even into September here in southwestern Ontario. So they could be out for a little while. I would strongly recommend if you can to put them underneath the canopy of somewhere where they're going to be out of the ex extreme wind and extreme weather. That's just going to help the actual trap to not get beat up so much and not take the brunt of the, of the weather. Hope this has been helpful. If you guys have any questions, post them in the comment section below. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. We hope it's been helpful for you and good luck battling those LDD moss in your yard this spring and summer.